So, welcome to this video, and in this video I want to have a look, a look at why the mass of a star alters the mass-luminosity relation. So if we first revisit a main sequence star, when a star is on the main sequence it is fusing hydrogen at its core and you're getting some outward pressure from that, some radiative pressure from that, which balances your gravitational forces. So they're in this hydrostatic equilibrium uh, and it's part of the star evolution where they spend the majority of their time. So they're in a balance between this outward pressure and these gravitational forces. Now if we go to the HR diagram, which is a diagram of stars plotted with their surface temperature and the luminosity, we get a nice diagonal down the middle, which is the main sequence. This is where most of the stars are going to sit when they're zero age and on the main sequence. And depending on where they sit on that is related to their mass. So the lower mass stars, a bit like the sun, red dwarfs, are down towards the lower right, and your more massive stars are on the upper left. So bigger the star, the higher the luminosity. But it's not quite that straightforward. So there's not just one relation which puts the mass and the luminosity together. It changes with the mass. So here we've got a few different relations between the mass and the luminosity, and it's put in terms of solar luminosity and solar mass. So for your very low mass stars, like your red dwarfs at the top, it's typically the mass to the power of 2.3. That then increases to solar mass stars, and then it decreases a little bit after that, but then your very large stars are at the bottom. So these are your most massive stars um, in the universe. And you can see that they change slightly. The luminosity as a function of the mass is not the same for all of them. So what actually is happening there to cause those differences? Well, it's predominantly down to the way that the energy is transported in the star. So the energy is generated in the core, where the temperatures are hot enough and it then radiates out to the surface and the luminosity is essentially the the energy that's been radiated away from the surface so that's the the total output of the star from the surface and depending on how it is transported from the core to the surface and then leaves the surface that obviously relates to your luminosity now as the star increases the energy transport mechanism changes so for low mass stars, like red dwarfs, they are typically fully convective. So the way they transport energy is through convection. For solar mass stars in the middle here, they have a radiative core. So right in the core of the star, the energy is transported due to radiative mechanisms. And then you have a convective outer layer to the surface. And then as you get bigger and bigger, it's the other way around. So you have a convective core where the energy is being generated and then a radiative outer layer. So it's the energy transport mechanism which ultimately impacts the luminosity. And the reason for that is it's how opaque the star is. And that will affect the luminosity and how it's transported. So this is obviously just for the, the central core, but it'll give you an idea as to why you may have convection or radiative transport in the core. So for solar mass stars, they have a radiative energy transport mechanism and they are predominantly generating energy due to the proton-proton chain reaction. Now, the energy production rate is a function of the temperature to the fourth power. So as you increase the temperature, then the energy produced by this chain reaction increases by that power. So they have a radiative energy transport mechanism in the core. Now, as you get to bigger stars, they have a convective core. So they're transporting it convectively, and that's because they're dominated by the carbon, nitrogen, oxygen cycle. Because they're a larger, more massive star, the gravitational forces are able to generate higher temperatures in the central core. This then means that the dominant mechanism for generating energy is through the carbon, nitrogen, oxygen cycle. Now that energy production as a function of temperature is a lot, it's a lot more sensitive to temperature, and it's basically to the 17th power of the temperature. So as you increase the temperature, the energy produced increases a lot more than the proton-proton chain reaction. And as a consequence of that, you get a temperature gradient which is able to initiate convection. So when you have a, a very steep temperature gradient, that's when you're going to have your convection setting in. And this just gives you an example as to why that occurs in different stars. 
So you've got two different mechanisms here for generating energy. One is more sensitive to temperature changes than the other. Therefore, you get convection setting in. But also, when we talk about how opaque the star is, what that actually means is you know, how easy it is for a photon to pass through the star and out to the surface. Because if you've got loads of photons leaving the surface, you're going to have a very high luminosity. And you have a low luminosity if it's the other way around. And how opaque it is just means how many times it's interacting on the way out. So if it's been scattered with a very short distance, so its um, mean free path is quite small, then it's going to be fairly opaque. And the opposite, if it's not, it's fairly transparent. So the photons can move through fairly unimpeded. So it's about the interactions this photon has through the star. And that obviously impacts the luminosity and that as well. So thank you for watching and if you enjoyed then you check out some more of the videos.